I had a hard time going to church as a kid. Not that I didn't like it, but we went Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and usually Wednesday night, all the time, through the 80s. My parents were really religious back then. They're not so much anymore. We talk about it sometimes, but uh, there was like part of that 80s revival stuff. Not that I didn't, you know, enjoy church and stuff as a kid. It was just, we did it so often and so long, like all day. It was an all day Sunday thing. Uh, but then, uh, you know, I got older and stopped going to church, you know, started living life. But it always kind of stuck with me. I always kind of considered myself to be a, a Christian, sort of, until I got into my, oh, what, 20s or so? And then I started having, not doubts, I guess it just, the, uh, the idea of it all just kind of went away. But then it started coming back again. You start noticing things that are missing. And I started to have some really deep questions about what was going on and what I really believed and that kind of shit. Pretty normal for that age, right? But uh, I guess you could say I, I stopped believing. I started having a harder time believing it. And I still do have a hard time believing religion. Believing that, uh, you know, the Bible was written by God himself. Sorry. To me, it's a beautiful book. It's priceless life lessons inside of it. Um, some really cool stuff. But it was written by mortals. It was written by human beings. And translated poorly and rewritten and rearranged and you really study the history of the Bible, you'll realize it's a hodgepodge of uh, old stories told by human beings. Flawed, imperfect human beings. Do I believe it happened? Maybe, like the whole story of Christ and everything else? It, it, it probably happened. I mean, I don't know. There's, there's some evidence that the story was lifted. But uh, I choose to believe it probably happened. Just a regular guy who... Uh, Probably had some revolutionary ways of thinking, and the old guard didn't like that and killed him. Sure, happens all the all the time throughout history. But um, you know the whole heaven and hell, and this is what's going to happen whenever you when you die. You know, how can anybody really predict that? I've got my own ideas, and so does everybody else. I guess everybody just uh, subscribes to the same newsletter and. Says this is what we believe in, so we're going to either be you know, Protestant or Catholic or Christian. We were non-denominational. That's what we called ourselves growing up. Uh, there was a lot of speaking in tongues. If you don't know what that is, I'm not going to show you. But uh, yeah, growing up, getting a little older now, you know, closer to my 30s, I had this religious upbringing, so it's definitely a big part of me. Definitely shaped the way I see things. But uh, I was having a real hard time with the whole idea of God. Even though I believed in it. I couldn't understand. I say it. Because I couldn't understand how so much bad shit is allowed to happen on this earth. You know, kids dying, people being tortured, mutilated, wars, famine. You get the idea. Just all the bad, bad stuff. The really bad stuff. How could a loving God let it go on? And I got angry and I stewed on that probably for a couple of years. Just that, you know, that kind of thought in the back of your head that just won't go away. Let me clear this out to make sure I don't get any notifications all of a sudden. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of a dark place to be because I felt like Maybe my upbringing was a complete waste of time and these are all just a bunch of fairy tales. And I don't necessarily believe that. So you know, I don't want to call myself spiritual. I mean, yeah, there's a, I believe in all that stuff, I think. You know, ghosts and the afterlife and the paranormal, and heaven, hell. I think I believe in all that stuff. 
I might not believe in the terminology, but you might go somewhere bad if you're a bad person. If you believe in the afterlife, you might not. I'm hardwired to believe in it, you know. I think some of us are. So I was hardwired to believe in God. Even as a kid, I remember the notion. I, I don't have a problem with that. But, sorry, uh, getting older, um, it's a big problem with a God that would create all this and allow all the bad stuff to happen. But then I discovered within myself the idea of deism. Now, deism is an old school theory uh, that I certainly did not invent, um, but I kind of came to those terms on my own. And I didn't know what the term was for it yet. And it was deism. Deism. A lot of our founding fathers in America were not Christians. They were deists. So a deist believes, and I'm probably going to butcher this, because there are a lot of different deists that believe a lot of different things, of course. I mean, we're all humans. We're all special little snowflakes, right? Well, kind of, yeah. We, we, in the idea that we're all like thumbprints and very different from each other. But the idea of deism is that God created man and that's it. He stood back and doesn't answer prayers. He doesn't perform miracles. But he's there and there's an afterlife and there might be a heaven or hell, but we don't know because we can't base that on reason. We base our judgment of what we see, on logic and reason. Um, and I believe that like beauty, Knowledge is in the eye of the beholder. And uh, it doesn't really matter what I believe. I'm just telling you to the about the conclusions I came to after you know, being born and raised into the church, basically. Losing my religion, struggling with that, then finding deism, a God that created the earth and stood back to see what we would do. I think it answered a lot of questions I had. It, it made a lot of sense. I remember it clicking into place one day. And ever since, I've kind of had this newfound peace about that specific struggle I was going through. So maybe there's somebody else out there who's never heard of deism. It's an interesting idea. Uh, I think it saved me from actual atheism. Now, that's not to say I don't believe that God doesn't answer prayer or intervene in our lives because I've, I've seen things that could be considered miracles. I'm not going to explain them or it doesn't do any good. I mean, you have to see it for yourself. So uh, I, I'm not saying that miracles could exist. I don't know. I'm not going to weigh in on that one. I'll just say, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. It's a great topic. I have talked about a lot in the past, so maybe we'll just hang that up now for deism religion. Use that as an introduction to the topic that I'm sure we'll hit quite a bit more down the road. But it made me think about, oh God, now I can't remember it. I have to rewind it. What did I just say? It made me think about the phrase, I don't know, which is going to be maybe the next vlog. The power of I don't know, or should I just talk about it here? The power of I don't know. I'll tease what I know about that one, and then maybe we'll talk about it later. I'm sure we will. I'll forget about teasing this. And the power of I don't know is pretty interesting. Uh, back when we were kids in the 90s, there was a television show on Nickelodeon that used to slime the guest, pour a bucket of slime on them anytime they said I don't know on screen. It was a gag of the show, a regular recurring bit. But um, <laughs> there's a reluctance for people to say I don't know. There's also a power in saying, I don't know, and meaning it. Not just like some sort of blase kind of, I don't know, but really meaning, I don't know. There's uh, freedom in that. And instead of chiming in with our opinions so often, maybe we should embrace I don't know a little more often on social media, online, with our friends, our family. Maybe we should quit being experts at everything. Just because we have YouTube and we can figure it out, we can teach ourselves just about anything as fast as we want to. I'd rather slow down a little bit. I know it's ironic saying that into a webcam 
and posting this on YouTube. But uh, I, I sense that there's a need for people out there to disconnect. And I'd like to tap into that. I'd like to disconnect in more ways than one, not just from technology, but from the way we do things, the way everyone does things. That's it for now. Like, subscribe, all that other crap. I appreciate it. <laughs> Till next time, I'll shut up for now.